Hello, this is Nome. I am in Hollingstones East. I have uh, I've been in Hollingstones East a number of different times in the last 48 hours, trying to kill Drusilla Sithir. Um, I tried her once at 59, and then I tried her like three times in the last two days. I, uh, <laughs> in a lot of my videos, you know, I don't die very often, right? Because I try to be pretty careful when I'm making videos so that I don't die and have to spend a bunch of time editing up. Well, um, in this video, this attempt at videos, I've dumb done thing, done dumb things, or been confused by a mechanic that I wasn't expecting, or whatever, and had to do a couple of retakes. I'm not afraid to say that I fucked things up and died, but I don't want to do a video of that since it's very boring. So, um, anyway, I'm logged back in here. Drusilla is still up because she's got her terrible drop that nobody wants. Um, I'm going to attempt to kill her again. Um, I haven't died in here working on it, but I dropped my double invis at the wrong spot once and then got chased out of east when I was trying to kill a named placeholder instead. And then I came in here and got her pulled, but I had to run because she bested me by landing a nasty dot at the start of the fight and uh, me making a mistake about not trying to rapture her, trying to use a regular mez on her instead, and she resisted. And then the last time I tried her, uh, I couldn't get her to pull right. I was doing exactly, well, not quite exactly, but I, I was doing everything that I thought I needed to to get her to pull out of her room by herself. Um, but for whatever reason, it wasn't working. And uh, I have an idea about why it didn't work. I'm not sure if that's what it is or not, but I'm going to try. <coughs> I'm going to try to uh, get this guy buffed up again and uh, see if I can't single pull her out of her room in the way that I'm familiar with. I've probably said... I've probably said so many things... I probably could, should use Wonders for Pity Day. I've said so many things in the last... Um, you know, two and a half hours of attempting DS, to make a DS video uh, <laughs> that I can't remember now because I would like to say them again, right? But but I can't remember <laughs> what, what they are anymore. And uh, so I'm just going to have to uh, get by as I can. I haven't been successful killing her yet, so, you know, I probably need to... Uh, focus on that and not on the things that I try and remember the things I had said before. DS is pretty tricky. She's level 55. Um, she uh, is a necromancer, so she can cast some pretty nasty spells, and dots ignore runes, so even if I don't get meleeed at all, I can still find myself in a lot of trouble. Um, if... Uh, you know, she sticks a couple dots on me, and they'll eat up my 1,400 hit points in a hurry. Um, she hits for exceptionally hard for a level 55, instead of hitting for 160 like a normal 55 would, including the other named mobs in East. Um, she hits for like 228 or something like that. She also procs a nasty life tap, and comes with a pet. So she's pretty tricky. Um, not the hardest mob, especially considering that you should be able to single pull her by using the way assist aggro works. Um, you know, if you've ever aggroed something and it's, you know, uh, came charging at you, if you've ever aggroed something and it's come charging at you from a distance, um, but uh, that's a poor example. Anyway, how assist aggro works is when you directly aggro something, like when I dazzled this guy, he was directly aggroed on me. Um, assist aggro is when an NPC sees something that's directly aggroed, and then uh, I need no illusion. 
sees something that's directly aggroed and tries to assist it and runs to attack you as well. Um, something that only has assist aggro on you though will not chain its aggro to create a huge train. So it, proper positioning of NPCs that you have direct aggro on can cause some one mob to assist it but not other things that that assisting mob runs past. So the way you're try to pull DS anyways that I couldn't get to work the other day. Um, did I dazzle Tosh my pet? Yeah. So the way you pull DS is when my pet is standing in just the right spot, which is right in front of this door, you can mez him and then um, when DS walks up pretty close to the door, she um, sees him and tries to assist him. But she doesn't uh, have direct aggro on me. She only has assist aggro through my pet. And therefore, all the other mobs in her room do not come at me along with my pet. Um, there's something that goofy was happening that never used to happen that was making it more difficult to pull her. I think that she, <clears throat> excuse me. I think that she doesn't want to aggro by assisting something that's mezzed and already aggroed. It, you know, like if this guy's aggroed on me right now, which he will be after I run up here. Now my pet's aggroed on me, right? Because I was standing right next to him. If she walks up next to him right now, she's not going to aggro. At least that's how it looked when I did my last video. I'm losing my buffs. But, um, oops, almost got myself drained. Oh, oh, that was door closing. But, um, if when she walks up and stands next to the unaggroed but mezzed guy, because the mez blurred him, um, and then I tosh him, it will cause her to assist. So, I'm trying to make that happen here. Um, I'm not sure exactly why that's happening. It didn't used to work that way. It used to be that if she, if that guy was aggroed on me while he's standing there mezzed and she walked up next to him, it would cause her to come running. Um, it doesn't look like it worked that way when I tried to do it last night or yesterday. Um, I don't know why exactly, but oh, damn it, Bedlam. Setting up this pole is more annoying because of what seems to not be working the way I remember. I don't know if it's I'm doing something wrong or if it's actually changed, but regardless, I'm trying to pull her. So after she passed back into the middle in front of that second door there, um, which is locked and does not have a key, I will run over there. If she doesn't aggro immediately, I'll run over there and tosh my pet and fall back and hope that I can get her pulled single and then try to rapture her and get her locked down, get my pet charm back up, get her debuffed, kill her pet, and then kill her with lots of stuns loaded because she likes to try to gate. So I need her to path this way before my dazzle wears off and my pet paths away or charges at me, as it were. I'm not sure if he's aggroed or not. She is taking her sweet ass time coming up here. I guess I'm going to go dazzle my pet again and hope that. Oops. I don't know if this is going to pull her or not. If she's close enough, it will. It did. Oh. Okay. So now I've got her. <coughs> I need to transition her off of Rapture because Rapture is a very expensive spell and I don't want to keep recasting it. However, she's a little resistant. I got lucky there. She was about to dot me. Put Maz on my pet. That's going to clear the dazzle and allow me to recharm him. be a little overzealous with keeping her mezzed.
she slowed. Oh, I just want to see if I can get her blurred, hopefully, with a couple of messes quick, and then I'm going to send my pet in. If this one sticks, I'm sending him. All right. I don't have Bedlam or Rune up, unfortunately. And she's going to resist a lot, unfortunately, also. I don't have any clickies to try to quickly regain control of the fight if she breaks charm, so I just need to try and stay on top of stunning her and hope that my pet, good lord, hope that my pet can survive. I need to mem Boltron since my pet's dotted now. The only way I can get control of the fight if he breaks charm is to try to hit him with a long stun and then uh, use Boltrons to recharm him. But I can swap in another stun now that Theft of Thought is going to be on cooldown for the remainder of the fight. Last time I did this and actually got her pulled, she, um, she definitely my pet definitely broke, broke charm twice in before she was at 50%, which you know, made the kill kind of difficult. Is why I had it out. I need to chain stun her now, or else she's gonna hat or gate, not hat. Hey, I got her. She dropped a spell. Which is a terrible spell. Oh, it's. Oh, I guess it could be worse. Alright, so I'm gonna gate out before my pet turns on me and annihilates me. Um, I managed to kill her. Yay! I only had to try and make this video like four or five times over the course of once when I was 59 and then a couple of times in the last few days. <laughs> Finally got her killed. So, uh, there you have it. Killing DS solo. I really like that fight. It was frustrating that I couldn't get it right. I think the assist aggro is different than it used to be, or, or I maybe was doing something wrong. But regardless, the setup of the fight and how tricky it is to get her pulled single without draining yourself, you know, uh, makes it fun. Um, and, uh, you know, she's pretty tough, um, all things being equal. She's not as tough as killing, like, Emperor or Dartane the Lost or, you know, pretty much anything probably in Siren's Grotto um, or the, a lot of the kobolds and velks and stuff like that but she was the maybe the second or third hardest thing to kill solo I guess in Kunark uh, that was realistic to be able to kill without unloading clickies like mad and she's still pretty tricky so it's a fun fight and uh, you know that's that's how I've done it I've done it a bunch of times in the past probably killed her 15 times in a row at one point back in Kunark, trying to get a Nas. Um, she definitely doesn't drop it very often. It's maybe like a 10% drop or something compared to that rod is most of the time and the mace is sometimes. She also rarely drops 55 plus spells. Not 60 spells, I don't think. And I've only ever seen some decent spells from her, never, never anything too impressive. Um, but that's a fight. I'm going to go back in and check out South see what's going on in there. But uh, then I'm going to take off and go read a book about economics because that's what I've been getting my rocks off on lately. I guess I'll keep the video going while I go check out south just because.
you know, I'm kind of tempted to... Kind of tempted to try to kill some stuff in East. Um, that same spot that I was fighting DS at is actually probably the best spot to kill names in East on an Enchanter these days. Because there's, you know, the, the, the corner that leads around to DS. The opposite direction, there's a door. And... Oops, I was kind of slow on the uptake there. No aggro, though. Um, on the opposite side, there's a door. And right behind that door is... Look at all these corpses. On the opposite side of that door, there is a name placeholder. And, uh... What was I going to say? Um, you can use assist aggro to snag him solo. Uh, it's probably even trickier than snagging DS solo because there's three roamers if you include the mob that I was using as a pet right in that area. And there's two other mobs very close, oops, I need that still, very close to the named placeholder. And if you don't position the thing that you're trying to proximity aggro with just right, hmm, little just right emote, um, then uh, you're going to get yourself trained by, you know, three to six mobs that are too high level to just AoE mez and, you know, moon dance around. So uh, it, can, it can be tricky. But I would like to kill some Inis just because it'd be nice to see some of the rare names in there. You know, there's some actual really nice drops in there that are nicer even than the stuff in South these days. The Paladin One Hand Blunt, the Dooming Darkness Rogue Sword, um, the Helot Skull Helm are all probably selling for as much or more than the, um, the uh, Fingerbone Hoop, although they're much more difficult to get, which explains why they're not very common. But uh, it'd be nice to do it. I don't know if I'll do it now. Oh, there's crap up in here that I need to deal with. Um, I don't know if I'll do it now or in the future. I always get excited when I see a slime, but it's not the right one. Let's see if how many live dudes I need to deal with. One, at least. Hey, at least these guys are non-harm touchers, so if I aggro all of them, I'm only going to eat three e-bolts instead of three harm touches. Because that won't get me killed just as surely, right? Um, I need to start carrying disease and cure potions. Okay. Okay. I think I'm good. So everything inside is not an issue, it's just that trash. Trash that I can't sneak by. I'm just trying to run around and have to pull him to see if he's got his one of his weapons or if he has the uh, gem looking for plat to buy toys with I don't need plat I need toys okay trash in there Okay, so I'm gonna. <sighs> I don't like pulling this room. I'm gonna use this guy to fuel some rebuffs. 
and then I'll make him a pet to see about killing that Crypt Feaster. Just, well, not killing necessarily, but I'll at least pull him to see if he has one of his rare drops. transition to Dazzle here for a little bit on him, since roots don't tend to hold as well as I would like for parking something to mana drain it and rebuff. So um, wait till you can't overwrite a shorter duration Mez with a longer one, so I can't Dazzle him right now. I have to wait for Mez to wear off, and then I can Dazzle him. Um, but then Dazzle lasts over a minute and a half, um, which gives me a lot of time to buff up and mana drain with no concern about him sneaking away and killing me. So I'm basically losing all of my buffs, and I need to recast them. I guess I can stand to not recast all of them. I'll just redo Gift of Brilliance and um, augment for the AC that it gives, and then I'll, uh, I'll see if I can lull that room and successfully pull the Crypt Feaster. And I'll fight him down to like 20 or 30% to see if he procs anything. And if he procs... Um, then I'll know he has a weapon and is worth killing. If he does not proc in that time, I can be pretty sure, pretty sure, that he does not have one of his weapons and he only has the little uh, fire opal instead. And then I'll just camp out and let him wander back to his spawn or whatever so that I don't really leave him up. He's not worth killing on the hope that perhaps um, him being up means he won't respawn again elsewhere. And it hopefully increases the likelihood of seeing an embalming fluid or a crypt, crypt feaster. I mean, uh, Specter. I'm gonna switch back to regular Mez because I don't I don't keep track of when Dazzle's gonna wear off, and it makes me paranoid that it's gonna wear off at the same time as Fetter, and then I'm gonna get harm touched and have to rebuff my Bedlam and Rune again. Rune again. So in another minute here, or so I'm gonna have Wandering Mine up again. I'll probably hit my pet with it and then charm him. Assuming he's charmable. And then I'll try to lull the room behind me to pull the Crypt Feaster out. just because. <sighs> so he's, by resisting an allure, I'm basically positive he's level 52 or level 53, probably 52, which means he's not ideal to use as a pet because he's going to be too tough. Aggroing this guy and using checking to see what level he is is an option. He's easy to single aggro. However, um, that also would mean I'm going to need a harm touch. That heal at skeleton isn't bothering me too much. I can probably try to. <clears throat> I'm tempted to just try to lull and hope I don't get a fail, and uh, and see if I can make this work with this high level pet. Usually I like to do lulling when 
I have a charm already. So that way I can try to use the charm to pick up anything that I aggro. But when I'm dealing with a level 52 or 53 pet, you know, I usually am convinced that he's going to break charm while I'm trying to lull, and then that's one extra thing that I have to worry about. So I'm going to try to lull these two harm touchers first and, and just hope that I manage it. I guess I can stand over here and try to AoE Mez before they get to me if, uh, <coughs> if I aggro. I'm going to get like six mobs coming at me if this fails. As this pather isn't right there, and um, that helix skeleton that just wandered in is back beyond the east door, I can snag this feaster out solo now. Need this guy to wander away. Need the helix to wander away. Okay, he's gone. Elot is still there. Oops, that almost got me killed. single pull down anyway, you know, and I, I can throw my new rune and stuff back up and uh, make this happen. You know, if, if you do have to fight with a level 52 pet, this is not a bad situation, because neither of these guys are casters, so you're not going to have to worry about stuff being dotted or, uh, you know, whatever. I already toshed any Voltrons and slow. I guess I'm not going to root either of them in hopes of not getting summon, summon whip, as I've heard people call it, messing me up if. I'm going to give my pet a weapon, but not haste him so that. He does more damage, but doesn't bash more frequently. And let's see if I can't pull this off. See, I really want an Eriad Shawl. That huge amount of charisma um, will enable me to dump. I mean, I don't think the item is great overall, really, because it has some negatives, you know, and. and uh, low AC. But it, the huge amount of charisma, charisma means that I can dump stuff like this, and this, and this, you know, for, and this, for items that are better, um, because I, I'll be able to stay at max charisma even without those things then. So, uh, Insignia Protector is pretty nice. Not as nice as the Orb of the Infinite Void. Haven't seen him proc yet. Um, oh, there we go. He's got a life tap. Uh, blood point. So I'm going to kill him. Because uh, the blood point's worth 1500 plat. 
I don't know if somebody got him up on purpose and then just said screw it because he usually doesn't have anything nice or if they you know, knew what he had but decided to leave him up anyways because it's it's only 1500 plat. But regardless, I am going to kill him. Just gonna mez the feaster a few times to hope that one of them blurs him and then he doesn't have too much aggro on me when the pet starts beating on him. He really doesn't like me. He's probably gonna smack me again as soon as I put a bedlam up. <laughs> I would really like to get this pet killed since he's level 52. I, you know, uh, I'm tempted to send him around the corner and try to aggro stuff, but uh, that's dangerous. Maybe I'll do it anyways. Then hopefully I can get a, if I get another name to pop in this room behind me when the feaster dude responds, I can um, have something better to deal with to fight him. mobs if I send him out into there. What I really need is for charm to not break while I'm standing here trying to figure this out. But this guy to come out and I snag him and see if he's a better level to work with than my pet. Also level 52. I guess I'll kill him too. I mean, using a level 52 pet's not the end of the world, especially if you give him minus resist gear. It's just, uh, they're pretty tough. <laughs> I mean, I don't yeah, I don't need to haste him for him to kill an equal level thing, you know, that's slowed. He's going to stomp it, because, you know, he's not going to have the trouble getting hits that a level 49 pet, or even a 50 pet would, against a higher level thing. He's going to hit a lot more often and get hit a lot less, just because of the levels and stuff. But, um... You know, if I can avoid it, I just prefer to have a pet that doesn't summon me. This charm has lasted a long time, though. I like to, I've been using my fastest, lowest level stun right away to get a stun off quickly. I've been finding that against hasted pets especially, these 1.5 second stuns are pretty tricky to get off in time. Um, it's not, I don't know if it's great or ideal yet, because using the one second stun, you know, maybe that one sticks, but then maybe your one and a half second stun gets resisted and now both your stuns are down and you still don't have something mezzed and it's about to be beating on you again. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to decide what I want to do here. I think I'm going to call the video good and uh, since my goal was just to make a video where I kill DS anyways, 
and I'll uh, I'll just wait to see if I get a respawn here. Wait to see if I get a respawn out here of a nice named. And uh, try to decide if I want to refresh my corpses and then do a video in East before I leave the Howling Stones area to go do videos elsewhere. elsewhere, Or if I want to uh, call it good and go check out some other zones and come back to East at a later date, perhaps after I get a near headshot.